right. So, for those of you that have thought that FT8 is not actually ham radio, I would like to introduce to you JS8 Call. You can think of JS8 Call as kind of like PSK that runs on the FT8 platform. Maybe that's the right wording. For those of you that have missed keyboard to keyboard with the newer digital modes, since FT8's come along, PSK, there's not a lot of activity. So I was looking through, uh, got an email that came through talking about uh, Winter Field Day and how FT8 was not going to be allowed. Okay, but JSA call is. So I said, hmm, maybe we should download this. So I have, I got it set up and I have literally minutes of expertise. A little more than that. I've had it a couple of weeks. Been trying to learn some of the stuff so I could bring it to the masses, you guys. And thank you for watching. By the way, while we're on that subject, if you like what you see, about hitting that subscribe button down there and just ring the bell. That way you get notifications every time we upload new content. So going through and let's take a look at it. You'll notice that all the singularities of WSJTX, the station and the behavior, even the radio settings are exactly the same. The audio settings look almost identical, and the reporting is extremely similar. The frequencies look the same, and the notifications are a bit new. But in the UI, in the band call and the messages, you do seem to have a little more control than you normally do in WSJTX. However, the challenge I've had is finding a lot of activity. Here we are, it's 40 meters, it's 7 a.m. on the East Coast currently, and it's uh, it's not a lot of activity down here you can see in the waterfall. I was on 80 meters earlier, very, very quiet. However, a bonus that we get, as you see over here, these HB auto replace bots, you can do a heartbeat. So if you're curious to where if anybody's on the bands or if they're just, if they can transmit, you don't have to go to PSK Reporter or any of those other uh, reporting sites. This little button down here, if you got everything enabled and set up correctly, now you'll have to go through this. This isn't a full tutorial, it's more of an introduction um, up here. One of the things I have noticed, it's a little quirky to get used to if you're used to WSJTX. So it's a little bit of a learning curve with that. I'm sure if you give them their, uh, send them some comments that they will be more than happy to make adjustments to make it easier for users. And why wouldn't you? But this window over here under the messages on the left side, under the frequency display and all that, that's kind of like the band activity. In the center here in the yellow, that would be like your transmit frequency, uh, just like WSJTX in the right-hand window. And on the right, it's all the call signs you've heard, comments, and it gives you, uh, you know, the age, signal noise, offset, and all that other other jazz, receive call signs, which is kind of handy to have a little extra set that's just the calls and not getting all jumbled up in the uh, bandpass messages display. So uh, if you've ever been on 20 meters on FT8 and then when it's really busy and it's it just loads up. Sometimes it's a little hard to find. And you'll get some icons over here too uh, for new stuff, for stuff you've worked and uh, who you've connected with. So, but like I was saying, the interesting part, if you send a heartbeat message, let's just do that. And you know, it's, it's gotta wait till he gets in the cycle and it will transmit it. Can I look at my power here, ALC. 
and you want to, I won't go over that in a minute. So we just set a heartbeat, asking for auto replies, spots, and it will send your grid. Now we're waiting, we see some activity down here. There's some that are pretty loud. Boom. One, two, three. So there's three people. See the stars here? Hearing your station. Very handy. Wow. And then also, you know, the acknowledgement, and there's a report coming back. That in itself, I find very, very interesting. Very handy. Uh, so you can do a little quick house propagation, is anybody around, that type of thing. Just by clicking the button there, waiting about 30 seconds, and boom. As long as everybody else has it turned on, but it's pretty, pretty cool. So up here on the top right, you know, that's enable, disable for the receive, much like uh, the buttons down for WSJTX. Transmit, that's enabled. Now this, you can cycle through the settings for JS8. And I kind of like having a lot of that stuff there. And then you can enable the auto reply, um, the heartbeat and the acknowledgements from there. I do like having that. The spot, which is, it's just gonna send a spot, looks like just to the network spotting services. And then the log button, insert new log, and the tune button, very, very similar. It's a CQ button, so let's, let's send a CQ, let's see if we see anybody. Waterfall display, you see it gets quiet right here after three uh, kilohertz, because I have the bandwidth set to 2.8. Uh, another little interesting tab you get over here is the this control display and timing, which is a little bit easier to deal with than kind of uh, those little small buttons on the, that separate display on WSJTX. And you can set all that. It's pretty much the same controls. And I haven't experimented with these on the timing. I haven't needed to. I run a separate app that keeps time. So one thing you do, though, when you go to a call sign, you're actually going to select it. So nobody's really answering this. And that seems to be the challenge here. Let's see. We're going to right click, direct message. We're going to try this in. We'll see if we'll get a reply. So you see here, directed to. So that's going to send it direct to. You can set up groups if you're doing a net. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe we have gotten used to the easiness of FT8, where you just double click and it sequences through. Now in FT4, I think you absolutely have to have that because the turnaround is so quick, you can't, there's no way you could select each one and go, go, go. And timing on these modes are extremely critical, extremely critical. You know, if you're off, it's just not gonna work. All right, so nobody's answering us. And that is uh, kind of what I was afraid of. So I'm just going to deselect. But like that being said, you do get keyboard to keyboard. And during Winterfield Day, I was able to record just some screen captures. I didn't get in the contest. I didn't want to interfere. I had some other things going on. Anyway. But that's the only place I was able to get all my B-roll was there. Uh, and there was a lot of activity during that. 
during Winterfield Day. So there are some hopes. I do see some uses for this in like emergency communications. Um, so you do get keyboard to keyboard. You can send you know, actual messages. I think it would be real good since it's built on FT8. It's not, you know, like some of the other digital modes, uh, full duty cycle, 15 second, second transmits, and you get a break. So if you're running on emergency power, battery, solar, or whatever, you're not going to sit there and just transmit constantly if you get a long message. Um, I kind of like that. So I do see some uses for it, and that's a little exciting. I think we just need to get some more chatter about it. However, I'm thinking contesting in DXCC is probably not going to be there for that. However, but if you wanted to run a digital net, you could do that. And like I said, because you can, you can create groups um, add a new station or group, you know, then direct that to a group of people. And if they have that, say, that's the all call. You know, you, you could do this a lot easier than you could on some of the other digital modes. So I do like that. I, I see some uses for it. It's kind of cool. Um, the interface is a little, it's just different. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's just uh, a, a little different. And some of the stuff, the help file in 100% um, filled out. Look, that guy's just answered a VK. Huh. We'll see what we can do here. Send that around. If you are comfortable in WSJTX, you won't have any problems getting this set up. I don't think anybody heard us. Since it is kind of built on WSJTX and a lot of those same controls, you know, you're able to send your log contacts to your electronic logbook. Depending on what you use, you may have to play around to see what works best for you. But I was able to get it work, was able to get it working with um, HRD logbook. And as you can see here, that these, uh, MFISC. Now, I just imported these. I did get it. This was my uh, one test <laughs> that, I, that I did after I got everything turned on. So that's why these signal reports didn't, uh, didn't come through because that was just an import from the, the ADIF because I wanted to get them in the log. So that does work very handy. So yeah, I hate where there's not a whole lot of activity, but there are some uses for it. I definitely see some good uses. I like if somebody took something um, that we had, put a spin on it. And I, I, I would imagine there's some people that miss the keyboard to keyboard aspect of PSK. This will work under lesser conditions, which is always a bonus. And I, I think the the transmit and receive cycle time is probably the biggest challenge in getting our minds to wrap around how this works. Um, think of it as somebody that speaks in choppy sentences, and there's only so many characters you can fit in. So you're only going to do that. However, when you're doing that, it will calculate for you how long it's going to take to transmit the message down there in the, in the send. So you'll know how long it will take. So if you're typing a whole bunch, and part of the thing like I used to do in PSK, you know, when we weren't sending just the macros <laughs> and, and cheating, which you can create in here as well, uh, you could start typing answers. If the other guy you're working is asking questions, go ahead and start typing that. And then at the end of the transmission, you hit the go button. And you can finish typing or if you already got it done, 
go get a cup of coffee, whatever you need to run the restroom, you can do that. Um, and then you can come back and you can see how far along you've gotten or if you're done or if the other guy's replying. So we still have that. Uh, it is nice to find something that's keyboard to keyboard that isn't ready, an 100% duty cycle and a uh, pain in the ass to use. So I like it. I don't know how much people are going to be using it for DXCC. I mean, it's so easy, so, so easy to use FT8, FT4. But if they allow this for, con for some contests, then that will definitely get some use. And there was a fair amount of activity on it during winter field day. Um, I wish I would have had it. Field day for, regular field day for me, I'm traveling around visiting sites. It's a little hard uh, for me to sit there and monitor it, but it would be interesting to see if anybody used it. So all the links to JS8 call will be in the description below. I would encourage you to check it out. Let's get some word about it. Let's get this going uh, and get some other people using it and try to get these guys some more feedback. They're doing good work. Program seems stable, hadn't crashed with me, hadn't done anything really weird. They're trying, they're doing good stuff. I appreciate it. We should all appreciate anything anybody does to try to progress the hobby, make the hobby better, and just experiment, because that's, that's, that's the hobby, right? That's the hobby. So we'll put all those in the description. Leave your comments down below, any questions. I'm still gonna be learning on it. Maybe once I get a little more comfortable, we can get a little more in depth. We'll see what else we can do. Now, that being said, there's a new app uh, called ARRL Events. So any of the bigger ham fest like Orlando's coming up, I will be there. Come find me, say hi, grab a drink, whatever. Um, but it has all the information, forums, uh, where people are and everything built right into the app. It's really cool. I just think it was just released. I saw it in the Hamcation uh, email that came through a few days ago. I downloaded it and I said, well, now this is handy. You don't have to go try to figure out and carry around this flyer. But it's better than the flyer. Go in and try to find a board, figure out when everything is. Really cool app. It's a great idea. And I'm glad to see that happening. So. Go download that app for your uh, smartphone, iOS, and uh, your Android. And hopefully we'll see you in Orlando. Um, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and leave your comments down below. I try to do my best to get back to most everybody. I think I've done a pretty good job of that in the past. I've had uh, most popular video was the ZS6BKW antenna. We've hit over 30,000 views on that now, which is very, very impressive. And we're very happy. Thank you so much. And we're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Well, if we hit that number, we'll see what we can do special. Maybe we do a live stream or something. But thanks for stopping in, guys. We'll see you next time. See ya.